Good day everyone, I am Noela Angela L. Patatan, a second year forestry student of Bicol University, Ginobatan. In compliance with FDS 37 with course title Forest Protection and Health, I will be sharing with you information about the Atlas Moth. Our discussion will be about um, its taxonomy, morphology, life cycle, and detection of damages to host plant. Starting off with the taxonomy. So, a species Atlas moth or the Coast Atlas is from the Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Anthropoda, class Insecta, family Saturnidae, um, genus Atacus. It is believed that the name Atlas is from the Greek mythology, which was fascinating because um, moths of family Saturnids is named also from Greek mythology. For example, Prometheus moths and Hercules moth. So another perspective on its name came out from the patterns of its wing. The Cantonese name of the moth means snake's head moth, which can be observed and which is also part of its defense against predators, on which we'll be talking about more on the later part. And next one, its morphological um, identifying features. Its wingspan is in female it's ranging from 240 to 250 millimeter and in male it's 210 to 230 millimeter its wing shape is rounded four wing is protruded from the anterior distal edge the wing base colors are deep orange soft brown or deep reddish brown and is patterned with white black brown and pink coloration with a large white triangular hyaline spot in the center of each wing for the mouth part of the adult are non-functioning. They have two large compound eyes, two orange-brown bipectinate antennas. This adult non-functioning mouth part, how do they survive? That will be um, answered later on. The orange-brown antennae are bipectinate in both sexes. For additional information, the legs of Atacus atlas are short, hairy, and no spurs. So, in this slide, we have here a photo of Atticus atlas with, with, with labeled parts. We have here the three major segment, the head, thorax, and the abdomen, and also the other parts. Next one, we have here sexual dimorphism. What did this sexual dimorphism mean? So, sexual dimorphism means that male and female are not the same in every aspect, in every part of the, their body. So, like for example, its wingspan. So, I mentioned earlier that the wingspan of male is about 210 to 230 millimeter, while in female, it has 240 to 250 millimeter. Um, another is the male antennae. Compared to females' antenna, it is much wider and longer. Also, males' antenna is much feathery. This is to enable mates to track down the pheromones released by the female in mating as part of their mating behavior. Okay, next one, we have here the distribution of Atacus Atlas. It's well distributed in Southeast Asia, including the Nepal, Northeastern India, and so on and so forth. There are localized populations reported in the Philippines, also in Papua New Guinea and Northern India. So in the Philippines, we have the Atacus Lurkini. So let's move forward to its life cycle. Saturnidae are complete metamorphosis. It, is, it means it is hollow metabolus, which means it undergoes the four stages, the egg, larva, pupa, and the adult. So the first stage is egg. Fertilized eggs are laid on a host plant by the female moth. In stage 2, the larva. Um, later on, I have a picture of the 5 larva inside. So, atlas moth caterpillars can grow to about 4.5 inches in length and are a pale greenish color. And atlas moth larvae are distinguished from other caterpillars due to the presence of white fleshy spines along their back that get more pronounced as the caterpillar matures. During the larval stage, gives the organism enough energy to its 
or for its entire adult lifespan. Since adult doesn't have well-developed mouth parts, the energy that they consuming is from the larva stage. Um, as we all know, larva stage is the most destructive stage of, of, of an insect. So, um, the larva of this Atacus atlas is the source of energy. So they eat and eat and eat and consume it on the adult stage. Stage 3, the pupa. It is surrounded by a cocoon, a papery outer covering of the pupa. It serves as camouflage as Atacus atlas pupates in the trees. Cocoon coloring of Atacus atlas varies depending on the host plant from a blackish brown to yeah, br brownish yellow. So this coloration um, is a camouflage. It is like their defensive mechanism during their pupa stage. And the pupa itself is dark, brownish orange, smooth and shiny, and is 35 to 55 millimeter long. Finally, we have here the adult uh, stage four. At the small adults only live for one to two weeks. They spend all of their adult life looking for mating opportunities. So uh, once they they become an adult, successful meet up will mate for about 24 hours. And after that, the female will fly off and lay its eggs. Its eggs counts from 300 to 400 eggs. Um, it will be laid off to suitable host plant. Moth dies after its first reproduction, meaning they are semelperus. Uh, moving on to its... Here, we have here the pictures of egg. The ins are 1, 2, 3, 4, and a, and a 5 matured larva. The pupa. And it's the first three stages. The mating behavior. So female atlas moths are sexually passive, emitting powerful pheromones that can attract potential male suitors from the other, um, from several kilometers downwind. On the other hand, male atlas moths are able to detect the pheromones via the chemoreceptors located in their large feathery antennae and home in onto the female. Next one is the feeding behavior. Its larvae is polyphagous. It feeds on variety of different host plants, whereby Records have shown that there are at least 90 genera of plants in 48 families that they feed on. Polyphagos means they are equipped with the toxification enzyme so they can feed on many different host plants. Though they ignore the other parts of the plant like the developing leaves, flowers, and woody stems. The next one. The defensive behavior of adult and larva. In adult, um... It is called the uh, Balea mimicry. In larva, we have the chemical defense. The tips of the atlas moth four wings resemble the head of the snake. Remember, ring the Cantonese um, meaning of moth. And it facilitates its defensive behavior. It is believed that when disturbed or threatened, the moth will drop to, uh, to the ground and flap its wings, thereby giving its potential predator an illusion of a snake movement. And in the larva, the chemical defense, the atlas moth larvae are able to produce defensive secretions. Remembering the white, whitish flesh of larva, these secretions are produced from a series of in the gumental outgrowths called scolite on the thoracic and last abdominal segments. The atlas moth caterpillar typically discharges their secretions either as a droplet or spray to relatively great distance when disturbed. Here we have the picture of how they, they protect themselves from the predators. We have here the adult and the larva. Host species and the damages caused by atlas moth. The polyphagous larvae of the atlas moth feed on a variety of different host plants where typically the larvae feed only on the mature leaves of host plants and ignore the other parts. In contrary, despite its immense size, the adults do not feed at all as neither sex possess fully functional mouth parts. We have here Nephelium lapashum, the Mangiferi indica, and Sandaricum quechape. Um, atlas moth caterpillars can result in the significant defoliation of a plant or small tree. Though it is not labeled as a major pest, during some certain season, it may be elevated to pest status. 
So here is the pest management and control measures. Removing the cocoons of Atlas moths by hand as often females oviposit on the same trees where they have matured and developed larvae. Cocoons of Atlas moths are big enough to get grabbed by hand. So next is the chemical insecticides. Um, chemical insecticides will also be effective against the larvae, but since it is polyphagous, the problem here is that polyphagous insects are able to detoxify such chemicals. In the last one, the most innovative solution is to encourage harvesting the cocoons diligently for sericulture, which not only brings less pest problems but also a potential economic gain. It is not um, new to us that this kind of moths um, produces silk. It is somehow economically beneficial. That's all. Thank you.